Boston Dynamics here. Well, it's raining. It's a little chilly. And I've been up since 4 o'clock this morning. It's 9.30. So, got to run this load like a bat out of hell, right? Because, I don't know, it's got to be there tomorrow. So, i got 782 miles to go. I got six and a half hours on my drive. Uh... I got the reefer acting up. I don't know if it's because of the rain. It's saying remote temperature sensor. And I think it's a short in something because whenever I go over a bump, it goes from green to yellow, back to green, to yellow to green to yellow. It'll stay on green for a little bit, and then it'll go back to yellow. Uh, I don't know how to... Fucking, I don't have a remote temperature sensor. So, all that shit should be disconnected, but it started. It had nothing to do with starting and stopping and all that crap, but I'm going to leave it running. Well, made it over here to Effingham. I'm in the back, 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 back row. So we're gonna kill this. We're gonna go check out the yacht. Uh... Hopefully I don't get blocked in. There's a sign. I'm under the sign. Yeah. So, it didn't give me a yellow light all the way here, which is good. Uh, I think I'm dead on reefer. Uh, yeah, three quarters of a tank. That should get me back home. Need to replace my stickers here. I did one side, but it was a pain in the ass. I guess I'll go Go take a shower. See, I got this side here done. I left this on, which I wish I wouldn't have. But you can at least tell. All right, I'm gonna go get ready for a shower. I'm tired. At least I kind of get to sleep in, I guess. Go do a post trip here. And, uh, Walk over there and shit, maybe I'll eat at IHOP. Who knows? We'll see. It's much you get a little lazy, right? They still don't know what's going on with that. Still got some kind of leakage. I just can't tell where it's leaking from. But, oh well. This is what happens when you spend $21,000 and they don't even paint the fucking thing, right? Isn't that crazy? They didn't even paint it. Yep. Stuck out here in Effingham, Illinois. You got the uh, Kenworth dealerships right over there. These are the people that towed me in. Awesome guys. They also uh, <clears throat> recovered my load for me, which I don't think was a bad deal. Um, even if what is going on with my truck um, isn't that serious, which we don't know yet. Um, but they're saying it's at the Kenworth dealer. Everybody else around here said it would be until the beginning of next year before they would even look at my truck. So these guys here said, hey, uh, why don't you take it over here to Kenworth? And I'm like, well, I've had, you know, issues with Kenworth. But they're like, yeah, well, they're really good guys and we know them. And 
they do work on our stuff and so anyways brought it over here they got it right in they diagnosed it they said it was an oil cooler which it is shot all over the place um, so I'm just hoping I didn't fuck anything else up on it uh, this morning when I started it up it didn't build like it wasn't building uh, I guess temperature so it wasn't the truck wasn't warming up very fast and I'm like well that's kind of weird and then the oil pressure like barely went up and then finally it got up to its regular you know oil pressure and I was like okay well that's good I started to leave and uh, there we go mobile service specialist I started to leave and so I got like 20 miles down the road and uh, it just it wouldn't I couldn't get over uh, eight gear when as soon as I shifted gears it like the uh the pyrometer went up to like 12 or 1300 degrees and still wanted to keep going so downshifted uh back to ninth and was doing about 55 60 miles an hour um and then it sounded weird when I tried to give it gas like when I would hit the accelerator, it sounded like it was missing. Now, when I left the truck stop, it was doing the same thing. It sounded like it was missing. I just figured, well, I'll check the, uh, I'll check the uh, fuel filter, you know. It hasn't been super cold out here, but again, I was like, well, maybe the fuel's cold. I had a half a tank of fuel. And uh, so I was just thinking, because it sounded like a missing injector. So I was like, well, maybe when I get on the freeway, it'll clear itself out. Uh, if it is, you know, maybe there's a piece of shit or something stuck in the injector. And I uh, just decided, say, fuck it. And went about, I think it was about 15, 20 miles down the road. And uh, ended up stopping because I was just like, fuck, I need to get back. Or place to turn around. I found a, I found a uh, rest area. And uh, as soon as I stopped, it was just billowing out of the, uh, fuck, I keep forgetting what it's called. It's the uh, blow-by tube. White smoke just coming out like crazy out of the blow-by tube. I'm like, yeah, I'm fucked. I'm fucked. So anyways, I get those guys to tell me um, 650 bucks. Which wasn't too bad. He was like, "Are you got, are you ready to pay?" And I was like, "Dude, I, at this point, I don't even give a fuck, you know." And I thought it was gonna be something crazy the way that they were talking, and they cut me a break. Like I said, six hundred fifty bucks. Um, so then I started asking around because uh, I called the company. Well, I texted an email. I'm like, hey, I, I, what do you guys want me to do with this load? I have no clue what I can do with this thing. I don't know where, I don't know what to do. Uh, this is why you never rely on anybody else and just do your own shit, right? Because, like, they were no help. I mean, they were kind of some help because they helped me pay for it. But I asked the, uh, I asked the towing guys, I'm like, do you guys know anybody that, that can recover a load? Like, and they're like, well, where's it going? I'm like, you're going to Ohio? <laughs> and they're like, huh. He says, yeah, we do it. I was like, well, cool. And uh, he gave me a quote. And he's like, to take it up there and bring it back, uh, we can do it for $3,000. They said, if, if you just want us to take it up there and drop the trailer, it's 2700 But if you want us to come back, it's three grand." And I'm like, well... Fuck, I kind of need my trailer back. Um, so, anyways, $3,000. And that's where I said the company stepped in because I was like, well, can I pay with a credit card? And they're like, yeah, but then you're going to have to pay the 4% or whatever the fuck it is. And uh, so I asked the company. First, I asked the company if they could figure out a way to uh, to get me a, a rental. Well, there ain't no fucking rentals out here in, in Effingham, which I figured... It, Effingham's a pretty good sized place, right? I was like, well, shit. Uh, 
anyways, that's that's I, I wanted to see if they because you can't rent a truck with just one, you know, a single owner operator can't rent a fucking truck, right? So the closest place was Penske, which was in St. Louis. I didn't even call them because these guys were like, yeah, we can we can uh, we can do the delivery. So three thousand dollars, which it's a thousand miles round trip. It's like four hundred and seventy five miles there. 475 miles back so we just said fuck it five you know make it 500 miles let's do a you know a thousand thousand miles round trip and they only charged me three thousand dollars so to me that ain't bad three dollars a mile to go deliver my fucking load and again this is why i hate reefers because if it was a dry van i would have sat on it until i kind of knew what was going on with my truck um I could have probably sat on it, but again, these guys, they can't get an oil, uh, what is it, uh, uh, oil cooler until Friday. So they're thinking Monday is when it will be done. Which it's like, okay. Because again, trucking is nonstop, right? But uh, when you work on trucks or there's a shop that deals with trucks, they only work nine to five Monday through Friday. Off on holidays. It's pretty much government fucking hours right so I guess the blue beacon is open I don't know oh yeah they're open so that's what I'm dealing with uh, this is probably it for me for trucking my this is if, if it's just the oil or the oil cooler probably looking let's say a thousand bucks I told him to drop the oil pan to make sure there's no issues with the oil pan, or I mean with the bearings, all that shit, right? So I'm gonna have them pull the pan. I told them I got a whole case of uh, brake cleaner in my truck, they can use that. I don't know what the fuck this guy's doing. I said they could use that, so hopefully they can clean out some of the bullshit that's in the crankcase. Um, and get that all cleaned out but i hope i didn't do any damage but i'm to the point to where i'm just going to probably park the truck i haven't paid for the insurance yet um and then just go get a company job till i can get even because like i honestly this shit's you know like trying to figure out what to do with the load is uh very stressful especially reefer right of course nobody uses their flashers like use your flashers they don't use their flashers i don't know what these guys are teaching these people they're gonna let this guy go i don't know anyways keep you updated let you know what's going on all right well at the hotel room right so we got the quote they're thinking supposedly they got their how many times have you guys heard this uh they got their best mechanic on it right supposedly this guy is uh this the cat mechanic the head cat mechanic right uh Make sure that's in there so <clears throat> i have to say these these guys at the uh at the tow truck they were freaking awesome man i mean i i don't know to take to take the trailer deliver it and to come back you know three thousand dollars that's like three bucks a mile that's uh that's not too bad i guess so i mean it's i was thinking six dollars a mile is usually what these recovery places but these guys were just awesome so anyways uh so they actually got it apart well they didn't get it apart but they diagnosed it while i was over at the uh uh bs and with the um the tow truck guys right and i go back and they're like, so we're thinking it's the oil cooler. So they 
ran air into it and they heard it goo gurgling. I think I've already said this. Um, so it, if it did, I'll uh, say it again. And I guess just as a uh, refresher from what else we found out. Uh, so I told them to drop the oil pan and uh, I have a case of brake cleaner in my truck that I just got. Um, and I was like, can you use that to, you know, make sure that the bearings and all that crap is, is out of there because I don't want coolant, you know, when you put the new oil in, I don't really want the coolant mixing with the new oil, right? So I think what he's going to do, he's going to flush the system uh, you're going to drop the oil pan, clean it all up underneath there. Um, and then he's going to run some oil in there, I think. And then to clean it out and then drain it and then run and then put fresh oil in it again, I believe. Because they got, maybe that's 48 quarts. So maybe he's not, I don't know. But uh, yeah, so total. Uh, Parts, $1,891, or sorry, that's labor, $1,891, which is like 12 hours of labor. So I'm guessing six and six, I don't know. Parts is $2,275 and all that good stuff. So just a hair over $4,500. Um, so we'll see, we'll see if that fixes the problem. I'm very pessimistic about that. Um, just because of what it was sounding like. Uh, it sounded like something was knocking, but then they said also that um, <clears throat> as much fluid that was in the oil pan, because he showed me on the dipstick, I mean, it was like way up there. It basically, all the coolant just dumped into the, uh, into the oil pan and just completely so you had full oil and then you know 10 gallons of basically coolant went down inside of that uh into the into the pan so into the crankcase um so he's saying what what i could have been hearing was the i guess the crank not you know splashing up uh all that crap that was in there i don't know I don't know. To me, it sounded, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it wasn't um, able to, when the, the piston was firing, it wasn't able to have a good, I, I don't know. I, I just hoping that this, this is the, the cause of everything, right? Was the oil cooler. So supposedly this guy is the top cat mechanic, I guess he had a 98 uh, Peterbilt with a cat in it. I, I mean, I don't know what that really means anything, but so that's what we got going on. Hopefully crossing my fingers, we can get it done by Friday. She said they're hoping to get the part by Friday. Please see the attached estimate for the unit. We just need approval to get the part ordered with a possible ETA of tomorrow. Oh, well, that would be awesome. Uh, today's Wednesday, so if they can get it by tomorrow and get it done by Friday, uh, I didn't. I didn't even see that. I mean, if these guys, if this is the problem, these guys get it done. Uh, you know, I'm gonna say Kenworth of Effingham knocked it out of the park because everybody that I talked to, I called three different shops and every one of them said, we're not working on anything until after the first of the year. So now if they could get it done, you know, in hindsight, uh, it's kind of like, you know, I could have still delivered the load. Um, but again, it's, it's reefer. I mean, it's 33 degrees and it was cheese. It's just, this is why I don't want to do reefer because of this situation right here. Like, and I've come to find out that you can only rely on yourself when it comes to things. I mean, luckily the company that I'm pulling for stepped up and, you know, was able to help pay with an EFS check uh, to these guys, the, the total $3,000. Um, and then they're just gonna take it 
for doing this load, I guess. They'll just, they just won't pay me. So, <clears throat> but I don't care if I can get the truck home. Um, like I said, we haven't figured out what we're going to do. Um, but possibility of going company is a very big, uh, option right now, just because uh, I haven't the insurance I didn't I haven't renewed the insurance yet it's not due until January um, like 20th or something like that so I waited on that I did register the truck uh, so the truck is plated I guess that's a good thing but I don't know maybe sit on it for six months um, I'm just worried about like if I drop the insurance how much is it going to be if I have to reinstate it, you know, six months from now or what the deal is, but having this much stress. And again, this is, this is another reason why I wouldn't want to have multiple drivers. Um, just the stress, I'm telling you, the stress is just, I mean, it, it, if you don't have the freaking, I guess, I don't know. I don't even know what you would call it. Not the balls, but just if you can't deal with stress, then it's like this, this shit here <clears throat> is not the game to be playing. Um, especially if you had multiple, let's say you had five or six trucks. Let's say two of them broke down. You know, let's say they like, what are you supposed to do with that freight? Right. Especially on the reefer side of things. I mean, if it's a, ca a catastrophic thing and like, you know, wh what am I supposed to do with this trailer? Wh what? It it's just, there's so many things that go through your head when this shit happens. Right. So th this is why I, I, you know, I, I dealt with, they weren't my trucks, but I was in operations and had to deal with 12 drivers. Uh, that was stressful enough. And I mean, livestock, like, but we just went from Utah down to uh, LA, down to Farmer John's. And we had, you know, a truck breakdown. Luckily, you know, it, it, it's only a, whatever that is, uh, six or 700 mile radius or whatever it is. It's like not across country, but could you imagine if you broke down and you're across country with animals, like you can't just let animals out. Like you got to get those animals just because of different, uh, you know, regulations that you have to deal with. You can't keep animals cooped up in a trailer for a certain period of time. It's against the law. Like that's an actual regulation. Forget what it is because it's been so long since I've done it, but I know these animals have a certain amount of time that they can spend in a trailer. So imagine if you were hauling livestock and, you know, it just, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, we're going to see what happens, but this trucking shit is just getting way too out of hand. Uh, this right here, I mean, just the stress level is just insane, but dealing with this now for over 20 years like I think I'm, I'm I don't know I think I'm done I think I'm gonna hang it up uh and again it doesn't have anything to do with the rates or the fuel or I mean it has that that has some impact on it just because uh I don't have the money to deal with it I mean you guys that have been following me I mean hell I had a truck blow an engine that I had to deal with that cost me $50,000. Um, you know, when, when all the bullshit hit, I had three trucks that I had to figure out what to do with. Um, and now this shit, you know, having a reefer trailer and then breaking down and then like, I don't know. Anyways, I will let you know what happens and, uh, hopefully maybe the truck will be done tomorrow or fucking Friday at the, at the latest. And then I haven't figured out, I, I'm, I'm scared to go take it and get a load. 
Um, there's a few loads out here in this area. Uh, going back to like Arizona, there's one going to St. George, there's one, there's there's some going into Salt Lake. Uh, they're all paying about the same price. They're about 32 to 3,500, um, depending. So I, I'd like to stay south. I don't wanna go up through Colorado right now. Um, so maybe I'll look at, at a dry load and or maybe I'll just start heading west and then if the truck is doing good um you know get a load and and try to get a load uh like in Kansas or something and just kind of see how the truck's going to be operating that way if I break down I don't have anybody shit in my trailer and I can just walk away right just say fuck it but all right we'll let you know later